I've got the sparse, the sickness. There's the twins in my brain. The 2023 season has been reviewed. Awards has been given. The holiday for the peloton is over. It's time to start grinding again towards the 2024 season. The months before the first road races are, road races are filled with off-road action. Our podcast, Crosses Boss, will take you through the cold and wet weeks. After a short break, the Domestic Roads Racing podcast is back. I'm joined by a very loyal Domestic Bram. Welcome. Hey. Bram, we decided to take a little break with the Domestic Road Racing podcast after a very busy 2023 season, where you're able to recharge your batteries a little bit. Uh, yeah, honestly, uh, it was a very long season already. Uh, well, last year it was a very long season. I think uh, both of us were there for... 30 35 podcast episodes so yeah. yeah but now we've had uh the what's under the hood and across his bus uh podcast sort of taking over so we have to fight back with the the racing podcast yeah that's why we have a little surprise for our listeners as well as we wanted to start our 2024 season with a bang he's one of the best climbing domestiques of the current peloton and helped his team leader towards a solid second place in the Giro Italia inches away from the overall win in Italy welcome Lorenz de Plus hello everyone thanks for the invite how are you very good uh, batteries are charged again so uh, ready to go <laughs> for the next season are you completely recovered from your injury um, after the crash in the Vuelta yeah I think so um I stopped my rehab two weeks ago already, so it's actually main focus now on the bike, like a normal season. So, yeah, it's a nice feeling to just yeah have no doubts anymore and just go yeah for a normal pre- preparation and uh, set the new goals for the next season. Recently, you were able to listen to the podcast "What's Occurring," the podcast from Irene Thomas. You were there together with Jasper Philipsen. We discovered you have a nickname, the Carrot of Ninova. Where the hell does that name come from? Yeah, a lot of people ask me that question now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a symbol of our city, Ninove. And um, yeah, every citizen is called uh, a carrot. And uh, that's why they call me the carrot of Nino. But uh, yeah, it's not the maybe the most, most fancy nickname <laughs> of the peloton, but uh, I'm surely proud of it. <laughs> Yeah, it was quite funny to hear uh, Geraint, um, because Jasper Philipsen was there, the Vlam van Ham, that he was joking with the, the nicknames um, in Belgium at all about food, the ham and carrot. It was a, a funny part in that uh, podcast. Mm. An interesting interview with Geraint Thomas, your teammate and good friend as well, um, released lately. He mentioned he has been drunk for 12 out of the 14 nights he was in Cardiff. Can you take us through your own off-season activities? Are they as spectacular as from Jerain? I texted him actually uh, yesterday to uh, I send him like, uh, hey mate, good uh, that you were uh, on the piss for two weeks and uh, make all the headlines in the news now. But actually, I beat you, mate. I did uh, three <laughs> three weeks full gas, twenty out of twenty one. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think the older generation. Oh, they, they they can just do the two weeks, right? <laughs> you you need to do a full grand tour, three weeks. <laughs> Got to go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely enjoyed my holidays. Uh, I then the one day I didn't drink was because I had a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I did a good mix of um, sports and uh, and yeah, just easy relaxing and of course yeah, sometimes a drink, but. Uh, all in the limits of a uh, normal. <laughs> I I investigated your X profile a little bit, and the 9th of October uh, was a hard day. It seems was the paracetamol able to dismiss the headache after that night out? <laughs> Not really, uh, but in context, <laughs> to put it in context, so we were invited by G to uh, celebrate the Giro with our full squad, and um, only a few guys were there, and. Mm. Uh, yeah, I invited us in Monaco to have a boat trip, and later on we went to the to club. And uh, yeah, I posted like a parcel, paracetamol much needed because yeah, it was uh, <laughs> yeah a lot of headache, and uh, we needed to take the flight after, so it was 
a horrific flight to Belgium. Actually, uh, it was a bumpy <laughs> flight, and uh, my my girlfriend was a bit embarrassed sometimes. <laughs> so the the passengers watching me like, fuck, he doesn't look uh, healthy. <laughs> yeah, it was quite funny. Before we look at the future, let's talk a little bit about the past season. It has been up and down for you. After some amazing domestic work in the Giro, you wanted to copy that in the Vuelta. But sadly, that turned out differently. You crashed in the opening team time trail and your hip was broken because of that. How disappointed were you? Yeah, very disappointed. Still now, I I do, try to don't think too much about it because I see it yeah a bit like a missed opportunity and also yeah I don't know it could have been avoided in my opinion with the bad weather and the yeah the nightfall. So uh, still a bit of uh, yeah unfinished business with the Volta. I hope to to go back maybe next year and uh, yeah maybe it can motivate me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were a lot of complaints about that opening team time trial um, that it was planned that early in the evening um, in combination with the rain it was quite dark did you guys not know it would have been it would be that dark at not at that time of the day or yeah not really actually we didn't really speak about it and yeah also the weather you can't predict it of course so mm -hmm. yeah I, I understand that it's a difficult uh, decision to make for the organization, but on the other hand, they did it in the past, I think, when I was still watching cycling. So yeah. I was like, yeah, after, like, why why we just didn't make a... I mean, it was 21 days. The first day is, uh, is also a bit of a show in Barcelona. So, yeah, I was... Yeah, still now I'm very disappointed about it, but we need to move on and, uh, yeah. I'm not a, a bad person, so I forgive them. <laughs> <laughs> the Vuelta in general turned out to be a, a little disappointing disappointment for the team. No stage wins and Geraint wasn't able to fight for the general classification as he hoped for. How did the staff, team staff evaluate the performances after the Vuelta? Yeah, I think uh, it's clear that it wasn't a, a good Grand Tour for us. I mean, we have like a bit of a reputation in the Grand Tour, so we always need to yeah to, to be up there for the win. And um, yeah, I think it was just yeah a bad vibe from the start with my crash and then also Timon's crash was pretty bad. And I think, yeah, as a group, you feel that when someone's crashing, like it's always a, a big hit to take. And maybe it's like a combination of everything that was the the world had to be for, uh, for Ineos. So yeah. Like I said, it's still unfinished business. Uh, also, my first par participation, I got sick the last day before Madrid. So, yeah, it's really like uh, now uh, next year, like to to make you, it to you have an extra grand. Mm, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of people are talking about the fact that Ineos isn't able to compete for a Grand Tour win anymore. They don't have the leaders that are strong enough, and the transfer strategy raises a lot of questions, according to. A lot of people and yeah, cycling lovers media. What do you think of that statement or thoughts? I understand them, of course, but also in cycling, a lot of thing, a lot of things can change quickly. And yeah, never, uh, I would never uh, underestimate us. I would say like we still have G, and also a lot of young guys are coming. Um, yeah, I would always, yeah, count on us. I would say and. Uh, yeah, like I said, cycling can change quickly and go to the top is easy, but stay there is maybe harder. So uh, the first Grand Tour they won was 2012. We are now mm -hmm. 10 years later. So, I mean, I'd like to see maybe the other teams when they're 10 years later, if, they, if they're still mm -hmm. up there. So I yeah. think, yeah. yeah, we have still a big reputation in cycling and in Grand Tours. So I would always, yeah, I would never, uh, yeah, how do you say, like, not count on us anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Of course, cycling is one of those sports where you're only as, ever as good as your last race. Uh, yeah. So it's just criticism builds really easy, but it's also really, well, easy to, to wipe away with a, a big win. And of course, fighting for the, well, having that second place in the Giro this year with G kind of shows that it's still possible. Uh, and there's plenty of young guys as well that are coming up. But, well, 
maybe we'll see more of them this year. I think with Carlos is in the tour, we already saw some some really good stuff. Yeah, Magnus also is coming, I think, for the mm -hmm. Grand Tours. I also believe in Tom Pitcock, actually, because he never had like a really like ideal preparation for a Grand Tour. And maybe this will change this year. So, yeah, I mean, it was top five until the last week, last year in the Tour. I don't know if like, yeah, that, like I said, things can change quickly. And But uh, I understand, yeah, it's... Uh, a good uh, a good quote from you like you're good as your last race and it's the same for me now i need to prove myself again and it's like over uh with Giro and all this thing next year we are we have to fight again you mentioned tom pitcock um being a potential grand tour rider leader does he want to focus completely on that or does he like to ride some classic races like Flanders like Liege as well. He has to focus on something at one point, or does he still want to go for everything? Yeah, I think definitely he needs to. Yeah, will focus more on the Grand Tours in the, in the future, but it can go hand in hand with the classics, like uh, Pogacar is doing. And uh, yeah, he had a great classic season with Strade win and uh, podium in Liege. So yeah, definitely, I think he'll he'll improve also in the Grand Tours next year. And like I said, yeah, I, I think last year was top five until last week, and also mm -hmm. the year before, yeah. just cracked the last week. And maybe that's due to training camps, like maybe a, a smaller base, and maybe we can focus mm -hmm. this year more on this. Is that also not caused by like doing the mountain bike and the cyclocross, where you don't build volume as much? I think maybe that's. Uh, where where he's going to be lacking that base, so would he have to give up one of those to be able to really compete in the Grand Tours? Well, I'm not his coach, but uh, yeah, maybe. But yeah, like maybe they will change this year. I don't know, or maybe not. Maybe after Paris, but mm -hmm. definitely in the future he'll he'll go for the Grand Tours. He he has it. That's for sure. Yeah, I assume in 2024 it will be focused on on Paris, the Olympics, and then after that it's gonna be a weird year for a lot of riders in the peloton. I think with that Olympics and the weird date close to the tour, so yeah, it will depend. A lot will depend on the scheduling of the programs. In comparison to the Vuelta, the Giro was exceptional for the team, and Geraint proved he was able to compete with the best. Together with Arendsman, you were able to support him over the long and steep mountains. Only Primo Zoglic was able to beat Geraint in the penultimate stage, the individual time trial towards Monte Lusari. I assume the team, the team was disappointed, but weren't you a little bit proud as well how the team performed during that three weeks in Italy? Yeah, definitely. We, we still have our WhatsApp group and we are all really proud that we... Yeah, we were in the selection of that Giro. I mean, if you looked at the lineup, we even lost Theo and uh, Pavel and Pippo. So we were like, yeah, it was a hell of a team, quality-wise, but also like a bunch of friends. And um, yeah, I think it will be hard in the future to to have that same vibe. But yeah, hopefully it will happen again. But uh, uh, it's, it's one Grand Tour to remember uh, till the rest of my days. You had not only during Thomas had very good legs, you had some exceptionally strong legs during those three weeks as well. You were able to finish even 10th in general classification, if I recall correctly. Was it something you had in your mind to stay in that top 10 in the last week and get that top 10 spot? Or was it just by incident that you got in there? Uh, firstly, of course, not because I had to pull on the flat, I had to pull in Philly mountain stages and in the big mountain stages. But yeah, because of the circumstances, then the last three days I was in that spot and also time and was still sixth in the end. But uh, yeah, you were in that spot and then you're just doing your job, you're pulling until you are, yeah, until the limit. And the goal was to win the Giro with G. But then when my my, my work was done, it was like almost 1k to go or 1.5k like five minutes extra i was like yeah it's not gonna make too much difference anymore if i go easy now or go hard to the finish 
So uh, yeah, in the end, it's still a top 10 place in the Grand Tour. And especially now after the crash and after we lost the Giro, I'm, I'm more than proud and happy that I pushed a little more. Yeah, after the 30 seconds, you recover, of course, because you're at your limit. But then, yeah, there's always a tempo that you can still produce. And now I'm, I'm more than happy that I did it. It's actually quite insane. You guys had three guys in the top 10 um, at the end in Italy. Um, Taman was very strong as well. Um, what do you expect from Taman in 2024? Will he be leader in a Grand Tour? Will he, yeah, what was the plan with, uh, with Taman? Uh, definitely, he's one of uh, our big stars for the future, I think. He was, uh, yeah, 16 Volta, 16 Giro, had a stage win already. So, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. And also, the first year in Ineos is not always easy. I experienced it myself. And, um, yeah, I think it's only only going to get better for him. I mean, the pressure in this team is totally different than in his previous team. And uh, he proved already that he's capable of being a leader or be a co-leader. So, yeah, I expect a lot of things from him without pressure. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, no, I think he'll, he'll be a Grand Tour leader. Are we next year for a leadership for Tamen or after yeah. that? No, I think next year he'll be already or already a leader. I mean, I don't know. I'm not the performance coach here, but uh, I mean, if you see his results of last year, I think he deserves it. And uh, he's 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 a he's a, a pure GC guy because in the third week he's on his best. If I recall correctly, uh, a couple of weeks ago we previewed the the Tour de France parkour um, together with Didier, and then. Um, the profile is very hard. It's a lot of long mountains. And then the one of the first names that popped in my mind was Taman, because the guy, I have the feeling he can handle a lot of volume. Um, so he might struggle maybe in the first stages, but when the fatigue kicks in through that three weeks, he might be a, a very dark horse um, for the fight until Paris. If I he goes to the a, tour, yeah, I think he's in this this year. So yeah, better buy to Nice. <laughs> But uh, I, I don't know. I, actually, they are speaking at the moment about uh, the programs of everyone, and I think there's a lot of changes still in the last hours and days. So yeah, we mm. still don't know anything. So even if I want to tell you, uh, I can't tell yeah. you. <laughs> so Damon and yourself got a top 10 in GC as a domestique. Um, guess what? In the, the Vuelta, we saw Domestique casually winning a Grand Tour in a very special way. Um, he started in Spain as a Domestique for two um, abs very strong leaders, Vinigo and Roglic. But he was able to get a red jersey um, in some sort of poker game that the break got away and he was in there. And he was able to keep it till Madrid. Um, such stories, does it make you dream? Of course, you always need to dream, and it's always, uh, yeah, it's uh, inspiration for everyone. I think because he's, yeah, he's just started like yeah, domestic, and then now he's a Grand Tour winner, and his status is completely different now, for sure. Now he's not a domestic anymore. <laughs> I mean, he'll be he'll be a leader in every Grand Tour from now on, or at least co-leader, and the teams will not give him two three minutes anymore from a breakaway. Because I think they had the great tactics with doing that the first week. And uh, right. yeah. yeah. You say that he's not a domestic anymore, but <laughs> on Twitter, we, we run our domestic of the year poll. Uh, and I think yesterday, that it was between you and Sepkos. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think, yeah. So he was still in our competition uh, and seems our, our, our audience thinks that he's still a domestic. Uh, I couldn't sleep this night. <laughs> How the, the, uh, the question it's it's difficult because he he domestiqued in the Giro in the Tour and then he went to the Vuelta as domestique it turned out a little bit differently he won the Grand Tour he won the Vuelta so how will they approach 2024 he will they use him as a luxury domestique as they did or will he get a protectus protected the role Um, at the start of a Grand Tour and see how far he gets. 
I, I'm quite curious to see how they will use um, Kus in 2024. Yeah, I think it's it changed a lot after winning the Vuelta. But yeah, before, of course, he is the best domestique from 2023. He did uh, an amazing job in Giro, Tour and Vuelta. I mean, it's, it's uh, actually go domestique for him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, now I think they will uh, they will change. I think, I mean, with Roglic leaving as well, even if status in the peloton changed, I mean, Grand Tour winner is Grand Tour winner, and yeah. I he really became GC Kuss. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In that, in that, uh, the Giro, um, Theo Gegenhardt came in Italy with an exceptional form as well. Um, it looked like you guys would be able to use two leaders, Geraint and Theo. But unfortunately, he crashed out in stage 11 and obtained multiple fractures, fractures, if I recall correctly. How did that change the team strategy um, starting in stage 12? Yeah, we're going back to the Giro right now. I know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, totally. The dynamics of our strategy changed totally because we had more of an offensive strategy at the first part of the Giro or like in our performance plan but after losing Theo it was more like a conservative strategy and like a classic strategy because yeah to win we had only one real shot so yeah it changed our dynamics completely and I think yeah, with Theo would have been maybe a different story after words is always easy to talk and yeah to speculate but yeah we spoke a bit with Theo and he didn't even said he went into the red before he, sc he crashed. And I mean, I was on my limits from the first week. So yeah, that says a lot about his, uh, how he was feeling and how he, yeah, he was ready for the fight mentally. He will ride for a little track next year. Um, how will you remember him as a teammate? Very nice, very ha happy, very humoristic i mean it was fantastic learned a lot from him as well he's very mature and like he knows what to do he has a lot of experience already and um yeah it was uh, was good to yeah i mean like i said the group of the giro will be hard to uh, to have an equal group in the future but i mean it was just special in all ways yeah it was uh, and i i think he'll he'll be a, a good leader in track and will be a hard competitor for us <laughs> So his transfer is a loss for Ineos, a big loss for Ineos. Yeah, no, no, for sure, because he's also very explosive and he's like a guy, you know, when you deliver him in the last K, you always have a chance to win. So that was nice, yeah. I mean, uh, the stage in Vuelta he won was uh, also a fantastic victory. And yeah, no, we'll miss Theo definitely, but uh, that's pro cycling and yeah, everyone has his own path. So that he had a good reason for his... Uh, his transfer to track it it might be a pity for Ineos but I think for the the, new, the neutral cycling spectator with Roglic leaving Jumbo going to Bora Theo going to a little track we will we see a lot of possible Grand Tour leaders in different teams so the dynamics in a Grand Tour might be different in 2024 yeah for sure uh, it's always better when uh... The leaders are spread over the teams for uh, the neutral fan. Yeah, I I, do, I agree, but uh, it's gonna be harder for for us. <laughs> <laughs> the team got reinforced with the young guy uh, Andrew August and Oscar Rodriguez. Um, Carlos Rodriguez, as mentioned earlier, renewed as well. Um, is the roster for 2024 complete for Ineos? I think there are still a few spots left. But yeah. Can you give us a spoiler? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know as well. <laughs> no, no, it's true. I don't know nothing. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides um, the transfer for, transfer from Theo, um, you lost uh, Dani Martinez as well, um, and Pavel Sivakov, um, both to uh, yeah, the one to Bora. Um, together with Roglic and Sivakov to UAE um, with Tadej. That are strong names that leave the squad. They are protected guys who can leave the team. 
is there a specific reason behind that or is it just the rider who wanted to get in start a new adventure yeah i don't i don't know because yeah i'm not the the manager but uh i think they all have a good reason and yeah i don't know is uh is maybe circumstances or i, I i'm just guessing because yeah, i don't, I don't know mm. i'm not uh, involved in the talkings mm. but uh I, I all I am surely knowing that uh, yeah they all enjoy their time at Ineos and that was a difficult decision. That's something I'm sure. Yeah. A couple of years ago, um, Bernal was one of the best Grand Tour riders of the Pro Peloton. Um, the guy was um, one of my favorite Grand Tour riders. Um, I like the guy and I still like him very much. But unfortunately, he had a very nasty crash. Um, on his time trial bike in Colombia, and um, I had to recover for a long time. It's even a small miracle, in my opinion, that he's able to ride his bike again. If you look back at the some videos we saw, he was barely able to walk. And right now, he's he did two Grand Tours this season, so that's crazy. Um, how did you and the team experience that trajectory from Bernal till now? He, yeah. Yeah, uh, you can only have uh, a lot of respect for uh, for him as a person, as a rider, and like yeah, all the sacrifices he he did to come back to the world tour level is is insane. Like it's it's not easy uh, to 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 be in the pel peloton already and to come back from a crash like that is yeah. Can only have like a massive respect for him and. Uh, yeah, he's a fighter and he will never uh, stop fighting to come back to his all-time best. And I mean, I cannot predict the future, but if there's one guy who can do it, it's Sigan. Because, yeah, he, like he, uh, like uh, I see him working like like a full gas. And yeah, I think it's, uh, it's normal that you always need a year of uh, mm. a, lot of, a lot of work and a lot of suffering. I experienced it a bit myself the first year after my... Uh, Bad period. I uh, also yeah, worked a lot on the front of the peloton and worked a lot yeah like on the side. And I, I see a bit the same with Egan that uh, that he was pulling a lot, always doing a lot of efforts for his teammates. And then maybe next year uh, is like a, a workload that you need. And I think it's, uh, it's only gonna go better and better. He mentioned in the tour he was able to get close to his all-time best power numbers in a couple of stages, but he had some difficulties with the to maintain that good level through the stages. Do you think he will be able to come back at his best level and maybe compete for another Grand Tour? I know it's always easy to say yes or no because everyone compares everyone to Vinigo, Pogacar and Evenepoel. But there are only three superhumans. Do you think he will be able to fight for a Grand Tour again if he keeps on progressing like he is? Yeah, why not? Yeah, really. Like I believe in him. I see how he is, how he's fighting, and I mean everything takes time. And yeah, why not? I mean, yeah, is it? It's hard for me. I'm, I'm not neutral yeah. because I'm his teammate, his friend, but. Definitely, uh, he's a champion. He won the Tour de France. He won the Giro. He's not a normal cyclist, so you can expect anything from him. And the, st the team still believes in him 100% as well, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all do. The coaches, the staff, yeah, everyone. And I'm uh, looking forward to go with him uh, to training camp already because he <laughs> yeah, he motivates everyone by seeing how he's working. You know. <laughs> That's beautiful to to hear. Uh, when does the training camp start? Uh, the fourth of December. Mallorca. Oh, and it's three weeks, two weeks. Uh, four to fifteen December. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Not that long. So it's gonna be nice to see everyone back and, yeah. and have some banter, laugh, and train together in the sun. It's better than it is in Belgium right now. Maybe even uh, a new tent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One day to uh, <laughs> photo shoot. <laughs> Gonna be a the good reality shock. Like when you're coming from winter, you always 
see how everyone is and then like, ah, I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> the past is a time to learn from, not to live in. So let's start and look forward to the 2024 season. Um, you mentioned earlier um, the team is still deciding who is racing what and making the schedule. Do you have some personal goals for the 2024 season? Except going to the Vuelta and get that revenge. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they asked me and I was saying, yeah, just all the Grand Tours. But uh, yeah, I don't think <laughs> it's going to happen. They were laughing because, yeah, it's it's hard to do. Seb did it, but uh, it's very hard to do. But yeah, in, in my dreams, I would like to do it because yeah, it's the best uh, races of the the calendar. But no, I don't know. They're just speaking at the moment. It's changing every day, every minute. And um, for me, it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, Grand Tours is always nice to do. So it's... Uh, is a gift, but uh, so yeah. In the beginning, I would like to, I would would have liked to do Australia, but uh, that's not gonna happen. So that is a little disappointment for me. That's uh, <laughs> that I know already. <laughs> so the, the people who go to down under already know they will yeah race there. Yeah. I don't know Pain. who it is, but the guy. No, I don't know, but I know Pain. I'm not going. So I was uh, <laughs> I was really hoping to go, but uh, they rather send me to another uh, altitude camp and I yeah, understand mm -hmm. that it's a, maybe a better approach but uh, yeah I never did it in my career and uh, it's actually on my bucket list yeah to see the country also and to race I mean mm -hmm. a lot of guys did already and always good stories so yeah maybe next year are there uh, any races that you'd like to race to win next year yeah for sure um, even like in a Grand Tour if there is an opportunity is always on in the, I was on the back of my mind, like uh, yeah, why not? I mean, in Giro was not possible because we lost a lot of guys, and uh, yeah, it's normal. Like if you go for a G GC win, is always priority, but if there is an opportunity on the side, why not? Like yeah, you always need to be ready and need to believe. Yeah, I never know. Definitely. Uh... One week or two weeks ago, the team announced your contract extension till 2026. Um, was there a lot, of, a lot of interest from other teams to sign you? Uh, after the Giro, yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, there are always, always teams interested. Um, but I don't know if, is it, if there is a better place than Ineos for me to, to stay either, or to be in. So yeah. Uh, I was happy that uh, the team liked me to stay. So, yeah, it was easy then. I mean, not easy, but yeah, it's always... It's also a really you nice extension. A, so. Yeah, you always have a preference. And yeah, that was my preference. Um, we talked a little bit about the Tour de France in 2024 as well with Damon. Um, did you see the stage profiles um, already? Or did you research it a little bit already? Or... Is it something for the next couple of weeks, months? Yeah, in December. Then there is always like a, a lot of meetings and a lot of um, yeah discussion about the parkours. The, the selection will be made there also. So uh, yeah, I don't like to read too much already about it because otherwise it's like meeting after meeting and you just have information. Information is better one time good than, uh, than always bits and bytes. So try to, yeah. I saw some, yeah, of course, passing on Twitter or X, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, did, I don't know the full story. So we reviewed the 2023 season. We looked forward a little bit to the 2024 season. Let's talk a little bit about Lorenz de Plus yourself, yourself. How did you start riding a bike? When did you start? How old were you? Who were your idols? Yeah. <laughs> Well, in, in Belgium it was easy. Uh, it was Bonen in the I was in the yeah. Bonen area, but uh, yeah, I started very late with cycling. I mean, yeah, 16 is quite late in Belgium. Most of the guys they start very young, but I see it as an advantage because yeah, it's like uh, it's not boring for me. I think if you start maybe too early, it can be a bit boring. Uh, but uh, I had a knee injury in football and I needed to stop. And actually, that was my uh, yeah was a was a good thing because that, that that's how I started riding the bike. Otherwise, I would never would have been never 
kid in the peloton. Um, and yeah, we, it's a funny story. We were on holidays in Tenerife and uh, Van Petegem was in our hotel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was drinking beers with my dad and uh, he was always a bit against cycling. And from that time, he was like, I, you can start. <laughs> <laughs> so you were yeah. you were lucky you you meet from Peter and you meet from Peter, or your father meet from Peter and there. <laughs> yeah, thanks you, to Peter. <laughs> <laughs> you started your career uh, in 2015 with the Lotto Sudal U23 uh, squad before moving mm. to Quickstep a couple of years. Um then you went to Jumbo Visma. Um you were with Jumbo Visma, was it were they already as professional or as scientific as they are right now in 2019, 2020, or not? Yeah, I think so, because it was the first year of the food coach app. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a yeah, big release inside the team, and also now they already released it outside the team. But it, it was the first year um, yeah, with the app, and a lot of things changed, I think, that year. Uh, my coach was Mark Lambert, the guy who's yeah. going to Bora now, the coach of yeah. Primos. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think it was uh, as professional as it was today or now. Uh, and yeah, I enjoyed my time there. I learned a lot there about myself, about training, about nutrition. And uh, yeah, it's always a good experience, I think, to have uh, information from other teams. <laughs> sure. So imagine your career ends um, next week are you happy with how your how it went the last couple of years are you happy with your career so far or do you think damn i should have done that or i should have done that differently well of course after it's always easy but no i don't want to end next week i want to continue uh, yeah, more course. years and uh, i'm not finished uh, i mean i would like to yeah I think it's just uh, always it's, it's good to see that some older guys also always get better. And for me, it's also an inspiration to see yeah, Caruso on the podium one time or, you know, not saying that I'm, I'm I want, I want to do that, but just like to see older guys performing is always nice. And uh, that you need consistency in your career. That's, I think, the main thing. And then you always, yeah, can improve and uh and, and be better uh, you have experience but also yeah your your engine is a bit more stable or yeah, yeah. it's like you have less bad days so i I, uh, I would not be happy if it's finished next week i would like to do a lot, <laughs> a lot more and still a lot more uh yeah like to win some grand tours as a, as a teammate and yeah. maybe even score a result here or, or there uh, for myself a lot of pro riders and guys in the media say the last couple of years it goes a lot faster um, the peloton is faster is stronger like Thomas the hand if i recall correctly a year, a year ago that he isn't even able to get in the break anymore and he's pushing his personal records um power do you have the same feeling um the last couple of years that it's developing faster or I, I don't know, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, of course, it's more professional. And five years ago, probably not so much guys were weighing their foods in Grand Tours. And now, for sure, more more than 50%. But um, it's a, a bit of everything, no? Like the, the, the material is getting better, the food is getting better. It's normal that uh, we are climbing faster. But it's not that I have the feeling... I don't, I can't get in the breakaway anymore. So I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's a bit, or was maybe an emotional moment or something. Because I don't know. It's not possible that in, in five years. Yeah. Yeah. When you I look at your own power numbers, I, I completely understand you're not sharing them. But do you see still a, a positive evolution through the years that you're getting stronger and stronger um, every year? Yeah, but it is more stable. I mean, when you're younger, when you're 16 or 18, it's every year 20% plus. But now it's more stable. It's not like big, big differences. It's, it's, yeah, of course, you, you, are, you get stronger in a harder race, like when it's from the start to the finish. But like your, your peak performance or your peak 10 minute, 20 minute power is not like getting 
crazy more better maybe a little bit every year but not not a lot um so yeah I don't, yeah but it's, it's true it, that there is it's true like uh, when was trevali parisini i was in a whatsapp group mm -hmm. what i was talking about of the italian jock and um swifty was texting that he did trevali parisini in the beginning of his career and now and they were doing five kilometers per hour faster so yeah i mean it, the, yeah, the sport dev developed a lot during uh, during the years. Maybe one last question um, before we end. Um, the Worlds um, in 2024 are um, in Switzerland, um, if I recall correctly, yeah. and it's a very tough um, parkour. Do you dream to get in the national selection for Belgium for that race? Or are you saying no? Uh, yeah, of course, if, if uh, they ask you, it's always an honor to do. But uh, yeah, for sure, the priority will be first the Grand Tours. And yeah, I mean, uh, I'm riding for Ineos. Uh, so yeah, that's my main priority. But if they ask me and if it fits in my program, of course, it's uh, an honor to defend your jersey. I was um, lucky to be there in uh, Rio when Greg won the gold medal. And it's one of, uh, yeah, still of my best cycling moments. And since I since I'm professional, so yeah, is uh, yeah, it's the best feeling if a, a patriot is winning. <laughs> <laughs> Bram, I don't know if you have anything more to add. No, actually, you just asked the one question I wanted to ask in this podcast. So <laughs> thank you for that. It was, it was not in our preparation, but I thought, oh, that's an interesting question, and there you have it. Um, that yeah. just shows how synced we are as podcast people. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, I'll wrap up today's Domestic Cycling Podcast and a big thank you to our audience for tuning in. If you enjoyed the episode, consider supporting us on Ko-Fi and if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe and turn on notifications. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you next time. See you later. Thanks, Lorenz. Thanks, and everyone. Thank you, Lorenz, for cool. joining. I've got the sparse, the sickness, the sweet twin.